Hi, I'm Chrissy Mouton, Education Coordinator for Dixon Ticonderoga Company, and today we're talking about pour paintings. It's a technique that has exploded on the internet in the last several years, but it's actually been around since about the 1930s. A Mexican artist named David Sequeiro stumbled upon the technique while in his studio, calling it an accidental painting. It's a perfect marriage between science and art, and he fell in love with the beauty and complexity that these paintings provided with very little effort. And in fact, we're gonna show you just how little effort it takes to create these beautiful works of art. Let's talk about the supplies you're going to need for this project. One of the great things about this project is it requires very few supplies. Now I've got in front of me an 8x10 canvas. This is our Simply by Dangler Rowney. Now I have gessoed this ahead of time and allowed it to dry, which you definitely want to do ahead of time because that helps the paint stick a little bit better. You also want to choose two or three different tempera paint colors. Now I have chosen our Prang Ready to Use tempera paint in glitter red, fluorescent orange, and fluorescent yellow. Now to mix it up, you're just going to take about, it's about a 50-50 ratio of paint and glue. You can use the Creativity Street Tacky Glue. I've even used in the past the Creativity Street Glitter Glue. It also works very well for this project. So you're going to mix the paint and glue in a cup and you want it to be the consistency of about warm honey, I would say. So you may add a little more or a little less water depending on how much glue you started out with and of course depending on the paint color because um, as you know, uh, different colors, they're different densities. So I can tell you, for example, I used very, very little water in my red and I did have to put a little bit more in my orange and yellow. And you can see that there's some bubbles here sitting in this yellow. One of the things you can do, and you can do this now or later, you can take a little squirt bottle with some isopropyl alcohol and squirt that in there, and then that immediately gets rid of the bubbles. Okay, so there's two types, or two major techniques, I should say, when it comes to pour painting. A clean pour and a dirty pour, as they say. And a clean pour is you're just taking one color at a time and pouring it directly on the canvas. A dirty pour, you would take a clean cup and then layer these colors one by one into a single cup and then pour that cup onto the canvas. That's what we refer to as a dirty pour. But in this case, we're going to do a clean pour. So I already have my glitter red, my fluorescent orange, and my fluorescent yellow already mixed up. And so we're just going to start painting. So I'm gonna start by just creating some circles on the canvas using my red. Again, one of the beautiful things about this style of painting is it is kind of that serendipitous effect, that happy accident. I'm putting circles on here, but am I going to end up with circles in the end? Probably not. But that's what makes it so fun. And you can do this with any age group. So this is great for the little ones because you're just using tempera paint and glue, so you don't have to worry about getting any bad chemicals on your hands. Okay, so now I'm gonna layer in orange on top of my red here. You can see for the most part, I'm trying to keep keep these little circles going, but it doesn't matter if I bleed onto the next because ultimately this is all going to be running all over the place when we're done. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back in that with some yellow. Notice as I pour, it's pushing the, co the two colors before it, it's starting to push those out. I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple. Okay, go back with some red. I'm sure you can notice as I pour these out that my red is a little bit thinner than my yellow and orange, and that's okay. They don't all have to be the same consistency. In fact, um, denser fluid tends to rest on top of the less dense fluid and pushes it around a little bit more, so it's okay that one isn't quite as thick as the other. It's just going to help it move all around. So put a little bit more orange in here. Now we're ready for the fun part. So from here, you're literally just going to manipulate the paint on the canvas by moving the canvas around. Don't worry, it is going to drip off the edges and that's okay, that's what I want. And see how this 
paint just moves. It's just so calming to watch this process. The more you move the paint, obviously the more design you're going to get. So I'm gonna stop right there and let you see what's going on. You can see how all three colors are mixing together and creating a wonderful marbly kind of pattern. this corner a little bit better. And look at that. Now the entire canvas is completely covered. Well, there's a little bit here. One of the things you also want to have handy, probably should have mentioned it earlier, is you want to have a couple of extra cups or some soup cans, some empty soup cans, because you want to prop this up when you're done, allowing it time to dry. Okay, notice how I have a little blank spot here and here. I'm just gonna take my cup and pour directly onto those little areas and fill those in a little bit. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and pour just a little bit of orange in that as well. Make sure all of my sides are thoroughly covered. Okay, and again, from here I can continue to manipulate the painting or I can leave it as is and allow it to dry. Now you'll also notice again, there's probably a few little bubbles here and there. Again, you can just take some isopropyl alcohol and a fine little spray bottle and gently mist the top of it and it will explode all those little air bubbles and it'll also create a few little cells as the painting dries. So again, this is the clean pour, although it's not very clean. You can see you make a huge mess, but you end up with this beautiful painting that will take about 24 hours to dry fully. So you wanna keep it elevated on those cups and then allow it to fully dry. And once it is dry, feel free to spray some UV protectant on top of it, which will help it last a little bit longer. Okay, let's talk about the supplies you're going to need for this project. You're gonna need several plastic cups and some popsicle sticks, an eight by 10 canvas, and two or three different tempera paint colors. In this case, I'm using the Prang Ready to Use Tempera Paint in Glitter Red, Fluorescent Yellow, and Fluorescent Orange. And you're going to take individual cups for each color and mix about a 50-50 ratio of glue and paint. And then you add a little bit of water to get the consistency. We're looking for warm honey. So if it's a little too thick, you can add a little bit more water. If it's a little too thin, then just add a little bit more glue and paint to get the consistency that you want. But today we're actually going to do what's called a dirty pour. So I'm gonna move this canvas out of the way just a little bit. You're going to take one clean cup and you're just going to start pouring in starting with your red or it doesn't matter which color. I'm starting with red in this case. Just going to layer each color into one cup. Orange second. Yellow last. Well, this is considered the dirty cup method, obviously, because all of your colors are in one cup. And I recommend not doing too many colors unless you're pretty familiar with color theory because these colors will start to mix and you can get a very muddy look. Now from here, you can just pour this directly on the canvas. That is the dirty pour, but we're gonna do something a little bit different. This is called the flip cup method. So we have our dirty pour ready to go. All, of, all three colors are in the bottom of this cup. We're gonna take our canvas, set it on top of the cup here, hold it tight, flip it over, let it sit for a minute, give it a, give it a chance for the paint to run down the sides of the glass. You can also, I'm not going to in this case, but you can poke a hole in the top of your cup that allows some air to seep in and allows the paint to pour out a little bit faster. But in this case, it's working pretty well. So once it seems like the majority of the paint has settled out of the cup, we're just gonna lift straight up on the cup there. And there you have a puddle of color to work with. And from here, you're just going to manipulate this canvas. 
just going to move and shift that paint around until it covers the entire canvas. Unless you just want, you can leave it like this and it can just stay, you can just have some color in the middle, but I do want this to pretty much cover my canvas. So you just keep tilting it. You can watch how the paint moves from side to side. Now the more paint you have, of course, the faster this process will be. I probably did not use quite enough paint to cover this canvas, but that's okay. We will make it work. It's very fascinating to watch the paint move. I don't know, to me it's a very, um, very calming thing. Because I'm not worried about what's going to happen. I'm not worried about, oh, is there going to be a flower here or a sun there? It, it, you know, it's just, it is what it is. It's a happy accident, as Bob Ross would say. It is kind of an accident what you end up with. So I'm still shifting and moving this paint around. Still haven't completely covered my canvas. But you can see it's starting to move and shift. So I'm gonna go ahead, this didn't completely cover my canvas, but that's okay, this is a good thing to show you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and prop this up on a couple of empty cups. You can use soup cans, whatever you have handy. So there's still some paint in my dirty, my dirty pour cup that I'm gonna go ahead and try and fill in some of these blank areas that I had, because I simply just didn't mix up enough paint. But that's okay. That, again, that's the beauty of this style of painting is that you're, you're not looking for a very specific outcome. So you kind of do whatever you want. Okay, so the edges, now what I'm doing is basically just a clean pour. I've run out of my dirty pour material, so now I'm just using the colors straight from the cup and pouring them directly on to the canvas just to fill in these gaps here that you see. Because I do want my entire canvas covered for this particular painting. I'm just gonna run this up and down a little bit. All my edges are definitely covered, all my sides. You can already see the difference between what I've done as a clean pour and what I've done as a dirty pour here, which is kind of nice. You have two different effects on the same painting. So again, I'm going to shift and move this around a little bit. I've pretty much covered all of the blank areas of canvas, but I do want the dirty pour to kind of mix a little bit here with the clean pour that we've done. make sure that the entire canvas is covered. It will start to run off the edges as you can see here, but that's what you want. It gives it kind of a nice little frame. And there you go. And you can also take a popsicle stick if you want and kind of move these colors around a little bit more. You can manipulate them. Um, you could take a hair dryer and kind of blow the colors around. I just prefer to use my hands and just tilt the canvas as I want just to create whatever design I'm kind of looking for which is very abstract in this case obviously and look at that beautiful so as you can see with the dirty pour you know you've got some red and yellow which is mixing in and making orange we also have orange itself so you got to be careful you don't want to use too too many colors because it'll mix and make a very muddy looking color which we definitely don't want so once you have the design how you want it, and I like this, I really like what's going on here. It's a very marbled look. We've got the dirty pour in the middle. We've got the clean pour on the edges, which looks much more defined than the dirty pour area. You're just gonna let this sit. And now it will take about 24 to 48 hours for this to fully dry, and you definitely want it to be fully dry before you touch it because otherwise you're gonna leave a fingerprint or something in it. So you want it elevated on a couple of cups, let it dry 24, 48 hours, and then once it's dry, if you want, you can protect it by spraying a layer of clear 
UV resistant spray, which will help protect it a little bit longer. So now that you know how to do both a clean and dirty pour, I say get your praying paints ready and get creative.